SCP-007, also ominously known as the Demon Toxin, seems to be a type of nerve agent based on its effects observed by our team. The effects mentioned are physical, auditory, and serious of all, psychophysical, physically feeling things that aren't actually there. What makes this nerve agent so deadly is its ability to create realistic hallucinations experienced by the victims, and all seemingly share the same delusions. It is contracted through inhalation, but it's worse off when it enters your bloodstream, as it would be if we have open wounds. From there, it travels to the brain, where it bypasses the blood-brain barrier, and slowly targets the individual neurons. Observation of demon toxin has shown the patient's right side of the brain strongly affected, while the left is only partially affected, which in turn gives them strong hallucinations and a heightened alertness with an added spike of natural adrenaline. The first reported encounter with demon toxin comes from a tank commander and his crew, Tank Commander Leighton R. Randolph of the 23rd Armored Infantry Division. He was assigned platoon lead in his tank nicknamed War Mammoth. His crew consisted of Sergeant Space R. Griffin as gunner, Chance T. Briggs as driver, Randall D. Hencher as loader, and Alan D. Smith, assistant driver. Commander Randolph is fortunately still around, but not in the state to retell his side of the story. So his granddaughter, Samantha R. Wolf, will help us relive her grandpa's harrowing tale of this SCP. Beck, are you busy? No, not at the moment. What do you need? Can you let Samantha know she's greenlit? Escort her here, please. Of course. I'll be back. Much appreciated, Beck. In a select few situations, can you lie to keep yourself and your family safe? This isn't one of them. This organization isn't afraid to kill. If they got Alan, they most certainly have the leverage to kill me. Tell them my story truthfully, Sam. I mean it. Sam, you're up? He's ready to see you now. Come on, I'll escort you. Oh, all right. Thank you. Um, and your name is? Beck. That's how people address me. It's easier than adding my title. <laughs> Thank you, Beck. I hope I don't get nervous today. <laughs> You'll be fine, Sam. I have water in there for you in case you get parched. It's just a casual conversation with a friend. Here we are. Go on, take a seat right by him, and I'll be here. Sam, happy to have you here. Come on over. Thank you, Beck. Of course, Nick, anytime. Hmm. Hope the checkpoints didn't sketch you out. I have to go through those every morning when I get here. No, I mean, it was the first time experiencing it, but Grandpa told me it was necessary. I was truly sorry that was your first impression of us. Anyway, the reason you are here today, Sam, is you have a story, including SCP-007. Am I correct? Correct. I'm here speaking on behalf of Grandpa Lane Randolph about his full experience. If you can, please take us back to that time. I mean, you gotta hand it to him. Your grandpa is a certified badass. Well, yeah, of course. It wasn't just who he was, it was who he surrounded himself with that brought that out. Okay, say hi. Uncle Randy! Whoa, hey there, kiddo. Good to see you again. You're gonna need to be sneakier than that, bro. Kids are far more observant than us oldies. Who are you calling old? I'm looking at him, silly. <laughs> I think little Aurora has a question. What is it, sweetie? Will you make it home for my birthday, Randy? Of course, kiddo. I'll only be gone a little while. Commander? You okay, man? I'm alright, Alan. Thank you. Alan D. Smith, 
A skilled marksman, he was assigned the assistant driver. Courageous, funny, and a bit of a drunk, but when it was the appropriate time, of course. Sir, we have a situation on our hands. Head count shows one of our boys is missing. Minutes ago, I got an emergency transmission, and then silence. Who the hell goes without platoon lead? Where was their last transmission? We have their general location, three miles out from here. Gather the boys. We need to go now. Ready the tank. Let's go. What's up? What's up? Space R. Griffin. The toughest nails, rowdy, cigar-smoking SOB was my grandpa's closest friend. He was gunner of the war mammoth. You definitely don't want to be on the receiving end when he's behind the optics. What's up? Back the hell up, dog. Now, dog. Don't What's try up? your luck, boy. Can it, Griffin? Relax. We got MPs everywhere. A bunch of MPs and MFPs in this bitch. What's that stand for? Pussies. You're smart enough to figure the rest out. Have my cigar by Calm next your week. Ass down, Griffin. One of our tanks is missing. Who the hell leaves without us? That's what I said. We leave now. Next up is Chance and T. Briggs. I had the honor of meeting Briggs at a party once. He lived up to the expectation of being the greatest driver there ever was. He was DD, and I figured if he could drive a tank, he could surely drive a car just fine. I've never felt safer. Lastly, we have the tank loader, Randall D. Hencher. He and my grandpa go way back. Childhood friends both joined the military young. The difference with Hencher? He was conscripted. My grandpa decided to help and joined willingly. All right, listen up. One of our tanks went missing. Full crew and all. We have a general idea where they are, and we have no idea what happened to the crew. Expect the unexpected. Uncle Chance, start us up. Get us out of here. On it, boss man. The crew made their way to the last known position of the missing tank. I asked him once, what did you do to pass the time in the tank for long missions? He answered, sometimes all you want to do is sleep, but the boys in their banner kept me awake and aware. He's the tank commander, after all. Uncle Chance, I've been meaning to ask you something. It's been bothering me for a while. Ask away then, come on. Some would say, with all that weight, you would make a great loader. Why aren't you back here, man? Because I'm the only one with 2020 vision, unlike you. Shit, my neck still hurts from when you put us in that ravine. <laughs> oh, come on, man. That moment should have been short-lived. You know what else is short-lived? Your neck. <laughs> Bro, shut the hell up, Ramon. Bottle of Hennessy looking ass. <laughs> the premium curve design. Oh, no, you didn't Shit. do it like that. Dog, don't make me turn this tank around. Eyes on the road, Temahani. I don't even know how I managed to say that. Hey, Unc, would you ever take my place as loader? Nah, bro, I can't. Only if I needed to. Why is that, huh? I get this tank pregnant. <laughs> no. With how hard I slam that round in the breach, the tank's gonna retire nine months from now, and I already have a baby on the way. Did someone say on the way? Hensher, how many seconds does it take you to load a round on average? Hmm, I don't know. Usually like 10 rounds per minute, on a good day, of course. Well, that's odd. Your girl told me it was one round and done. <laughs> <laughs> Just gotta make sure I fact check, you know? Don't wanna be led astray. Ah, that's a low blow. <laughs> Let me see that pack, Hunter. Hmm. Are these the ones your girl smokes after sex? Nah, those are the ones that your girlfriend gifted me. Fair enough. That's when he saw it. The missing tank was found emanating a thick smoke from all of its ports. No crew in sight. The only external damage was broken tracks. Left sprocket took the brunt of the impact. This was a moment they all felt a heavy weight on their chests. When they went to investigate, Chanson was ordered to stay behind in case evasive maneuvering had to be done. Did it have a smell to it, this smoke? From what my grandpa recalls, he said it was very distinct and odorless. Like if you took campfire smoke and took away the pain you feel when it hits your lungs or eyes. That's how he described it. What the hell happened here? It's ice cold. That's odd. Commander, here. Left side. Tracks are mangled. What kind of thing makes a hole like that? Commandant, pardon if he's here. I want to be feeling. 
Wahr, wo wird er standen? Kolonier, Feuer einstellen! Jawohl, Herr Kommandant. Nächsten Hauptsächstrafen, das Benzin soll so ausreichen. Tiger, Tiger! Hatches, Hatches! That was my grandpa's closest face-to-face -face meeting with death. If he hadn't moved, he would have been taken along with that tank. It's a very scary thought to ponder. Yeah. He survived, but he, Hencher, and Griffin endured the worst thing imaginable for one whole minute. Shit! I got one in the breach! Clear! Give it to him! On the way! Get back, ho! Two incoming Panzer IVs closing in at 9 and 3 o'clock fast. Chance, reverse, left stick, halt 50 degrees. Loader, AP, AP. Biggs, traverse, left. 600. 600! Clear! Down 15! Fire! On the way! Boom, bitch! <laughs> Where the hell is he? Biggs, get a beat on that second Panzer. He's closing distance. Traverse, right. Clear! Halt! Fire! On the way! Damn it, it ricocheted. Chance, reverse hard right. Gotta outrun that Panzer's main gun. Oof. Damn it! Okay. We got hit! No shit. Big's gun, he's still in the fight! Big's line up on the Panzer's backside. AP's up. Clear! Fire! On the way! Ceasefire, tanks destroyed. What's up, Doc? Commander? Chance, back to your post. Commander, there are no Panzer IVs. The only tank I saw was a Tiger, which is still behind the hill. Are you shitting me? Both Grandpa and Griffin look through their respective optics and see the Panzer IVs there one second and see them disappear right in front of their very eyes, seeing only deep marks left in the dirt from the shot rounds. Then the Tiger reappeared, but this time to feed on its prey. Tiger, Tiger! Clearing the hill. Two o'clock high. Fuck this. Driver, front right. Already on it, boss. Chance, too far. Too Fire! Far. The war mammoth gets hit hard on its tracks. A violent concussive force jostled the tank, which caused Hencher to hit his head and get knocked out cold. Chanson tried fruitlessly to move what he could, but failed. Griffin desperately aligned his turret to the tiger. Load me around quick! <sighs> Got you! On the way! Damn it! Give me your best, tiger! Come on! I know you want to! Good times, Space. Good times. Fire! And after all the times they had together in the war mammoth, seemingly ends its life exactly how the crew wanted, with a fight. But just when he thought he'd miss Aurora's birthday, the tiger explodes in a shower of hot metal and intense flames. Then, my grandpa hears something that relieves him. Whiskey Mike 1-1, one, one. yo, dumbass, you guys are in good hands. Let's fix you right up, war mammoth. Good shit, Luther. Hope you all have spared tracks. He remembers that day as if it were yesterday. One question that worries him still is if the symptoms of the SCP will come back. It hasn't, but the thought alone is enough to scare him. Wow, that was such a harrowing story. I could only imagine what it was like in that tank. You helped bring awareness to 007 and provided us enough information to start looking into who potentially made it. So thank you so much, Sam. You're welcome. And your name is... Nick is what you can call me. You may go now. Be careful on the way out. I will. Thank you for having me. Great to meet you, Nick. Likewise, Sam. If you enjoyed this story, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more SCP Undocked content.